Today we saw LeBron James go down with a really bad looking right ankle injury against the Atlanta Hawks. And this is actually a very interesting case because typically when a person is going to injure their ankle, we see it go into that inversion position. But on the play that LeBron got injured on, it looks like it actually went into an eversion position. Now on the actual play that LeBron got injured on, we saw that his right leg was planted on the court and a defender would make contact with his right leg, sending his foot into that eversion position. And right after we saw that he was in noticeable pain and he was really grabbing at that right ankle area. Now, right after the injury happened, I'll be honest, I thought LeBron was gonna be done for the day because he was in what looked like a tremendous amount of pain. But what ended up happening was he actually stayed in the game for a little bit and drained a three-pointer. After he hit that three-pointer, however, we noticed that as he was landing, he landed all of his body weight onto his left side. So he really was favoring that right foot. And after that, he did leave the game and ultimately would not return. Since the injury occurred, sources have revealed that LeBron James is dealing with something known as a high ankle sprain. And as of right now, he's considered to be out indefinitely. And so since some people may not be too familiar with what a high ankle sprain is, we're gonna go ahead and take a look at that in today's video. Welcome back. Basketball fans. For those of you that aren't familiar with me, my name is Nick Gallon. I'm a doctor of physical therapy. And with this video, we're going to take a very close look at LeBron James' most recent right ankle injury against the Atlanta Hawks. First, I'm going to start off by going over the actual play that LeBron was injured on so that we get a good visualization for his mechanism of injury. Then I'll go over the ankle and foot position known as eversion and what structures are at risk when a person goes into this position. And finally, I'll go over the specific grades of ankle injuries and what to expect moving forward. If you like today's video and you find it informative, please hit that thumbs up and subscribe to the channel because I will be making more videos in the future regarding sports injuries, rehabilitation, and other physical therapy related content. Also, if you have any comments or questions, please leave those in the section below. Now to begin, let's take a look at the play that LeBron was injured on. We see here LeBron has the ball and the defender will make contact right here with his right leg, putting LeBron in noticeable pain. LeBron would stay in the game, hit and drain a three-pointer right here and try to run up and down the court a little bit before ultimately he would leave because he was in noticeable pain. So here I have a model of the foot and ankle. And so what happens to form the ankle joint is that there are two long bones that are in the lower leg. They are the tibia and the fibula. And both those bones are going to come down and right below them is a bone known as the talus. And so all of these structures together forms what we know as the ankle joint. And so the ankle position that we saw what looked like LeBron James foot and ankle go into is one known as eversion. Now, eversion is when a person's foot is going to go out that direction. Typically, when we see ankle injuries such as sprains or fractures or something of that nature, a person's ankle is going to go into inversion and that's a very common mechanism of injury. These eversion ankle injuries are actually more uncommon. So it's good to know that this is one of the more uncommon injuries. Now there is a normal value for the amount of eversion that a person should have at their ankle. And this can vary depending on the person, but usually it's accepted that the norm value is about 25 degrees. And so whenever a person's going to go beyond this normal value, this is going to put them at risk for potential injuries. If you've seen any of my other videos talking about ankle injuries, you know that when a person is going to land in that inversion position, that is really going to stress all of these structures that are located on the lateral or outside portion of the ankle. So when a person actually lands in that eversion or goes into that eversion position, the exact opposite is going to happen. It's going to stress all of the structures, including the ligaments on the medial or the inside portion of the ankle. Now on the medial part of the ankle, there is a ligament there known as the deltoid ligament. And this is a very strong flat and actually kind of makes a triangular shape and it's going to attach on the medial malleolus and is going to be made up of four different ligaments. The first ligament that's going to help make up that deltoid ligament is something known as the anterior tibio-talar ligament. And anterior means that it's going to be more towards the front of the body, so it's going to be further up on that ankle. And tibio-talar pertaining to that it's going to go from the tibia to the talus bone. 
The next ligament that makes up the deltoid ligament is known as the tibiocalcaneal ligament. That is going to go from the tibia to the calcaneus bone. Then we have the posterior tibiotalar ligament, which is going to go from the back or posterior part of the ankle. And that's going to go from the tibia to the talus as well. And finally, we have the tibionavicular ligament. That's going to go from the tibia all the way up to the navicular bone. And all of these four ligaments, they make up that deltoid ligament, and this is going to contribute to overall stability in the ankle. Now this eversion ankle position can be very risky for the ankle because this leads to a person potentially having several different types of injuries. The first that people usually run to are ankle sprains, and this can absolutely happen in that eversion position. There is a grading system for ankle sprains, grades one, two, and three. And so for a grade one ankle sprain, typically a person is going to stretch the affected ligament, but there's not going to be any tearing involved. In a grade two ligament sprain, there's going to be some stretching and some slight tearing of the affected ligament. And finally, in a grade three ankle sprain, that person is going to have a complete tear of the affected ligament. As of right now, sources once again have revealed that LeBron is dealing with a high ankle sprain, and this is actually going to affect two other ligaments that are located directly above the ankle and they are the anterior inferior tibiofibular ligament and the posterior inferior tibiofibular ligament and so for the anterior inferior tibiofibular ligament that is going to be located right here anterior meaning once again that it's located more in the front of the body and it's going to go between the tibia and the fibula and the posterior inferior tibiofibular ligament is going to be located more on the back of the leg here, and it's going to also attach the tibia and the fibula. And now, both of these ligaments are actually highly involved in keeping both of those bones together. Now, I've already talked about how we saw that foot go into that eversion position, but on the injury, when we look a little closer, we see that that lower leg is actually going into a rotation as well. And typically when a person is going to have a rotational force placed on the lower leg like that, these two ligaments are definitely at risk because that rotational force is going to act to separate the tibia and fibula bones. So as of right now, they have officially ruled him with that high ankle sprain. It's called a high ankle sprain because those two ligaments are located a little bit higher from the ankle. Whenever we get somebody in rehab that's dealing with a high ankle sprain or any type of ankle sprain for that matter, within the first few days to about seven days after the injury, this person is going to be in something known as the inflammatory phase. During this time, we are going to do a lot to try and decrease that swelling and decrease the discomfort in that ankle area. Then once the person starts to feel better, of course, we're going to involve some very light range of motion exercises, maybe some light stretching as well to try to regain normal range of motion. Finally, once the person starts to feel better, we'll introduce strengthening and finally sport specific movements. As of right now, the Lakers have ruled that LeBron is out indefinitely. So we're gonna have to really monitor his case moving forward and see how he does with his follow-up visits, see if he does any type of follow-up imaging so we can get more of an adequate time frame moving forward. If I happen to hear any updates regarding LeBron James' case, I'll be sure to post that in the comments section. Also, if you happen to hear something as well, please also feel free to post that as well. And that's it as of right now regarding LeBron James' most recent right ankle injury. Once again, thank you very much for watching today's video. I really appreciate it. If you really like today's content, please subscribe to the channel because I will be making more videos in the future. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you next time.